Put yourself in Dale Earnhardt's seat. He's won just about every race there is to be run. But he's never won the Daytona 500. And people keep asking why. How would you like to be Rusty Wallace, the defending national champion, buried in the back of the pack and considered by experts as nothing more than a long shot today? The smiles, the confidence. At Daytona, every driver has them. But in the grandstands and the garages, there's also a note of weariness, a discernible tenseness, because Richard Petty is back. Daytona has been more than tough the past few years for King Richard, but the word is he's coming back. Watch out for Petty. He's got a good car and a good chance, and that's all Richard Petty ever needed. This is racing's Cathedral of Speed, the Daytona International Speedway, drying out after an all-night rain, muggy weather, but fast times are expected. 150,000 of these people will crowd into this superstructure today, and they're the lucky ones, for the last reserve seat went last July. Hi, as I make my way through this crowd, it's time to say I'm Chris Economaki, getting my annual thrill after a cold, snowy, and raceless winter hungering for the first sound of a racing stock car. You know, the Daytona 500 is much more than a race. It's the Super Bowl of stock car racing, a place where champions convene and stars are born. A checkered flag at the Daytona 500 is like the green jacket at Augusta, a heavyweight title belt, or a Super Bowl ring. And when that checkered flag finally comes, you're sitting on top of the world. Gentlemen, start your engines. The starting lineup for the 1990 Daytona 500. On the pole for the third straight year, Ken Trader. And alongside, trying for his first 500 win, Dale Earnhardt. Ken Trader, he's the kind of guy that will race anytime, anywhere, including those tough little bullpens where anything goes when the green flag drops. Qualifying third, Jeff Woodine, the 86 winner, and two-time champion, Bill Elliott, outside. Row three is Harry Gant and rookie 500 driver, Jimmy Spencer. In row four, it's Mark Martin from Arkansas and Phil Parsons. In row five, Darrell Waltrip, defending champion, and Bobby Hillen. Darrell Waltrip, he's proud these days of the new priorities <laughs> in his life. I guess you say... What can make me feel this way, Jessica? <laughs> Give me a kiss. <laughs> Making his 30th start, seven-time winner Richard Petty, alongside from the Northwest Derek Cope. In row seven, it's A.J. Foyt, the 72 champ, and Mississippi's Lake Speed. Row 8 is Mike Alexander in the Bobby Allison team car and Davey Allison. Row 9 is Butch Miller and Irby Irvin from California. In row 10, it's Ricky Rudd and Terry Labonte, second year in 86. Row 11 is Sterling Marlin and Kyle Petty. Kyle Petty in number 42 car has given up a singing career to focus on racing only this year. But he still could sing a good song. is the rookie Jack Pennington and Michael Waltrip from Kentucky. Row 13, Wisconsin's Alan Kowicki and Larry Pearson. In row 14, Joe Rutman and Florida's Rick Wilson with a new team. Row 15 is an outstanding rookie, Rich Bickle and Morgan Shepard. Row 16, Neil Bonnet from Alabama and Dick Trickle out of Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. 
Row 17 is Brett Bodine and Hutt Strickland. Row 18, Arizona's Phil Markdahl and the 21-year-old rookie Robbie Moroso from Connecticut. Row 19, Jimmy Means out of Alabama and defending Winston Cup champion Rusty Wallace. Rusty Wallace, he'll cinch up the seatbelt on anything that goes fast. That's him. For row number 20, rookie Jerry O'Neill from Auburn, New York, and Jimmy Horton, winner of the ARCA 200 last Sunday. Row 21 is Eddie Beerswell and Dave Marcus in his 23rd Daytona 500 start. And then there's the crew from Days of Thunder. All the way in the rear, two cars for Nashville's Bobby Hamilton and the two-time Grand National Champion, Tommy Ellis. One lap to green, and the great American race will pour it on into turn number one as they'll escalate speeds to over 195 miles per hour. And there you see the pole sitter, Schrader, falling back, falling back all the way to the rear for the start. What do you think about the emotions Ken Schrader feels now? The fastest car three years running, wrecks and crashes, and now he's starting at the wrong end of the track. You wonder if this will affect his performance today. Well, they only locked about a quarter of a mile getting to the start-finish line in that 125-mile qualifying races, but didn't quite make it. Mark Martin in that Roush Ford, serious contender. He's been here five previous times in trouble finishing. He's ready to go. And that Arkansas handle on the steering wheel, you'll see that a bit later this afternoon. You're watching these pictures live. Here's car number 27 out and back, the Pontiac of Rusty Wallace. Wallace attempting to come up through the field, the Winston Cup champion, and win the race for the first time. Settling down for a start. 32nd annual 500. As 94,000 in the grandstand rise to send them off with a Daytona ovation. Let's listen. through traffic Marcus in the 71 at the bottom from the back of the field around Jimmy Means it was expected that he'd maybe clip off eight or ten cars on this first lap he has a lot of horsepower into that Chevrolet but he'll have to drive carefully so as to not get in trouble out in front it is Bodine from the point Earnhardt lies second they just move that inside row up from Ken, Mark Martin's picture, right in front of him is Phil Parsons, and down to his left is Waltrip. We've talked to Dale Earnhardt this morning. It had rained last night, and when we woke up this morning, it was still raining. This track is different from when they practiced late yesterday afternoon. It'll be interesting to see who has made the right chassis adjustments on their cars for this somewhat green racetrack. Meantime, Ken Schrader has passed seven cars trying to get back to the front. Mark Martin, watch that Arkansas handle when he comes down through. Look at them, four wide in the back straightaway. This is live. It's the 32nd annual Daytona 500. Waltz up on the bottom of the racetrack, dusting off three as he pulls himself into fifth position. Fates high almost touches. Very close in the corners there. Normally, you don't see Darrell Waltrip that aggressive this early in the race, but he made a tremendous move. Around Jimmy Spencer. I know I have high cholesterol, but I didn't know it may have led to my erectile dysfunction. Then my doctor told me about Levitra. Having diabetes changed my life, but I didn't know it might lead to ED. So I asked my doctor about Levitra. Two laps down. Search the Chevrolet, puts it in front, four drops to second. Waltrip's out of the draft there. He's down low. He wants to get in line to stay with him. We'll see what happens. And for the fans uh, that might not know what drafting is, two cars running close together, nose to tail, can run faster than one car running by itself. And in Waltrip's case, where he's down on the inside, he doesn't have anyone in front of him. And he needs someone to come up closely behind him to get going again. Here's Ken Schrader. He's in car number 25. He's not having too much problem getting through. Going up underneath. 
Rusty Wallace, Robbie Moroso on the outside in the blue car just in front of him. Alan Kowicki in that group. Meanwhile, the leader, Earnhardt. Schrader is up to 31st position. That means he's passed 10 cars. From Darrell Waltrip's view, pulls up behind Bobby Hillen and watch them live sliding through here. That's Mark Martin, number six on the outside. Inches apart at 190 miles an hour plus. This is what Darrell Waltrip needed was for another car to come out in the low groove so he can do some drafting. Bobby Hillen pulled out there, but now it looks like Walter wanted to go on the outside, but there wasn't room out there. Isn't there a rule about driving at least a car length back for every 10 miles an hour? Well, uh, not on the speedways, or at least they forget it when, when they buckle Get up. a tailgating ticket. <laughs> about a tenth of an inch off Bobby Hillen's rear bumper. You saw Waltrip. Look at this magnificent shot from the blimp as the 42 pour it on. There's 83, Lake Speed's car right there with Darrell Waltrip in the 17. Well back there running side by side after those cars in single order. Back on the 31 degree banking up on the wall. But Darrell Waltrip is going backwards. He's losing positions down on the inside. He just simply cannot get any help in the drafting. As he did a year ago when he went on to win this race, he backed yep. up for the first 100 miles. Another driver not doing too well is Richard Petty. He started 11th. He's back to 17th. Here's one they're nervous about. Jimmy Spencer right in front of Waltrip in the 57. They call him Mr. Excitement. Spencer's trying to change his image, but he's one that gets physical everywhere. Now, here comes Schrader down to the bottom. The 21-year-old rookie, Moroso, youngest driver in the race, number 20 on the high side, and just in front of him is Larry Pearson in the 16 car. The 25, the white and green on the bottom is Schrader, and he is ripping through this field. And he's catching up to some cars now that are very fast race cars. We saw Alan Kowicki in the car number seven directly in front of him. Those are good fast race cars, so he can draft with them and work on towards the front. And he could not linger. He had to go early here. He had to get up with that lead group. Let's go to Mike Joy. Ned's point early about the surface of the track is well taken. Oil and water and grease and rubber has gotten on this track all week from the racing, and the tires don't adhere. They slide along the surface of the racetrack. The rain last night washed all that off. The track is dry, and the rubber gets a good grip. You have to change the car's chassis and tire setup to compensate for that, or you may need this eraser later on. <laughs> Let's go down to Dave Despain. Despite the rain last night, Mike, most of the top teams say they made only minor adjustments this morning to accommodate the rain. They've been fighting a slick track all week, and they think it'll be slick within, some say, 20, some say 50 laps, certainly for the second half of the race. The only team that made a lot of major changes this morning, Junior Johnson's outfit here. Junior wasn't happy with the horsepower after the bush clash, went back to Ingle Hollow and kept the folks in the hollow awake a couple of nights with the dynamometer running wide open. Came back down here, they blew two ends engines yesterday and had to change in an early morning thrash at five o'clock today. Let's get back to the action topside with Ken Squire. Here they are side by side. That's Ricky Rudd in the yellow and white car that used to be Bodine's car on the outside. And the car that I'm really interested in now is Davey Allison, who's come from uh, 16th up to what, Chris? Fifth? He's up to sixth place. Now he's just taking another. He's into fifth. There he is. Derek Cope has come from 12th up to run with him there in the fifth place. Derek Cope, a tremendous racer out of Spanaway, Washington. Here you see him, the red and white number 10, right behind the black car of Davy Allison. That Ford is humming. But it is a Chevrolet that leads the assemblage going down that long back straightaway and over 194, 95 in there, Ned? Yes, in fact, they're, they're turning laps now in the low 190 mile an hour bracket, so they are running close to 197 or 88. Here's Ken Schrader and Richard Petty side by side and as Terry Labonte just in front of the one car and they've caught Daryl Waltrip Terry Labonte in a new ride this year the Jackson Brothers Oldsmobile car number one right there Schrader's alongside of Waltrip the car was run by the same man and he blew it right off look at Petty run Richard Petty on the high side where he likes to run he likes to run high, but Ken, if the if it had not rained last night, Richard Petty would be closer to the front right now than he is. Why? If this track goes gets slicker, he will be more of a force. He likes he sets his car up for a hot, slick racetrack, and it'll get that way as we go on later on this afternoon. The sun is shining here, the temperature will go up, and as oil and water and grease is put down, the track will get slicker. He's fallen back to 22nd position from his starting slot. Dale Earnhardt leads in his Chevrolet, and three Fords follow. Jeff Bodine, Bill Elliott, and Mark Martin. Davey Allison in fifth, Darren Cope sixth, Bobby Hill in seventh, Ricky Rudd is eighth. It is Jimmy Means in ninth, and Phil Parsons runs tenth in the Great American Race.
alive inside. Please drink responsibly. When the biggest names in sports go one-on-one -on -one with the best reporters in the business. I consider myself brutally honest. You'll see what really makes them tick. 60 Minutes on Classic. Fridays, 9 Eastern on ESPN Classic. Every Saturday, ESPN Classic goes live with college basketball's hottest matchups. This week, it's a live doubleheader. At 6, Rutgers takes on Pitt. Then at 9, Arkansas battles LSU. It's live college basketball. Saturday at 6, only on ESPN Classic. Welcome to Progressive.com. Did you find your policy okay? I did. Saved over $350. We have a savings of $350. A savings of $350. You know, that comes with concierge claim service, local response claim service, and 24-7 live support, all at no extra charge. Wow. Wow, I know. I say it louder. Have a great day. Lots of extra features that don't cost you extra. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. It's your turn to get in the game. If I can lose weight, so can you. It was easy. The weight started falling off, and I started feeling great about myself. Losing never felt so good. It's time for you to lose weight, too. Order Nutrisystem Advanced, and we'll ship you four weeks of delicious meals. Plus, get free membership, free counseling, and free shipping. But wait, call 888-554-0070 to find out how you can get 70 extra meals absolutely free. Live at Daytona, coming around a complete 12 laps on the two and a half mile track from Jeff Bodine's bumper view. You see that Bill Elliott has just pulled around Bodine. He has moved into that second spot. Earnhardt in the black car up in front. And Ken Schrader, who was on the pole in qualifying, then crashed a car in the 125 mile qualifying race, which was really a shakedown for him. But because he had to go to a second car, he was relegated to the rear of the field. If you have to change cars, you have to go out back. And here he is fighting his way beneath A.J. Foyt in car number 14, the Oldsmobile on the high side. And Schrader and Petty are now locked up as they continue to fight their way through the field. That's up into the 17th position. Petty had fallen to 22nd position. Now he's creeping back, and he's bringing Kenny Schrader with him. Pontiac and Chevy in your picture here. Turn one. Bill Elliott asserting himself today. Looking very strong. New crew chief, Mike Bean. Dale Earnhardt is slapping this racetrack in front at over 190 miles an hour. Last lap speed, 190.1. That's a pretty quick pace for racing conditions. To Mike Joy. Ken Darrell Waltrip has dropped well back. He's running a second off the pace. What's the problem, Jeff Hammond? Mike, what happened was we had a little bit of a vibration right there at the start of the race. We we're up there amongst all those guys. You can see they got a pretty good-sized pack going on there. So I told him, Darrell, you better get out of there until we figure out what it is. You know, we didn't know if it was something in the drivetrain or if a tire going bad or what it was. So we just tried to get out of everybody's way. And when we did, we lost the draft a little bit. He said it felt like it went away. I don't know if we just had a tire a little bit out of the way or whatever. But uh, it's got... Trouble out here in the corner. Mike Alexander running slowly on the bottom of the racetrack. Field into the back straightaway. Car number 12 off the pace. That is the Allison car. There's some concern just before the race started, Ken, among the officials about the electrics here. It rained all night. The uh, caution lights here weren't working properly. They're afraid they may have to go to the old yellow flag method. We'll have to see uh, when the first occasion for yellow comes. Here's Let's Mike see what the issue. Again. Let's see what the issue was here. Well, Mike Alexander down on the inside of Sterling Marlin in car number 94, and Alexander gets very loose. You can see the back end break loose, but that's tire smoke that we're seeing as Richard Petty and Ken Schrader go by on the outside, but he gets it back up on the banking, and he just told his crew after he got on the straightaway that everything was okay. Cost him a few positions and a few anxious moments. Now, as you watch that in slow motion, you have to remember that that was over 185 miles an hour, and he was able to control it. That's the big story. Running on the apron on a racetrack usually leads to massive incidents here. What about the tire that smoked like that, Ned? How bad is it? Well, it'll heat it up and could have some effect when he goes into the turn. He'll have to be careful for a few laps and not heat it anymore. Now, here's the situation. We're 16 laps in, and it looks, Ned, like a couple of cars set their machines too tight for this racetrack. Well, when they had their last practice yesterday afternoon, the track was very, very slick. 
and had a lot of oil and grease and water on it. So in that case, you want to set the car up very tight. But it rained last night, washed all of that away, and uh, some of them, and I think Richard Petty would be one of them, that their car would be too tight. But as the tires heat up, then it'll come back in his favor. And here comes Schrader beneath Richard Petty. Ken Schrader in car number 25 is now taking over 13th as they slice their way through the field on the 31 degree east end of the speedway. Meanwhile, up in front, what a battle is beginning to develop among those leaders. The fight for first place has Earnhardt, Elliott, Bodine, Martin all mixing it up. This has been a remarkable race. Ken Schrader starting the back, working his way up so beautifully. Darrell Walton, the defending champion, has fallen to 33rd place. He's 13 and a half seconds off the pace. One little vibration has done that to him. And Ken Schrader is actually gaining on Dale Earnhardt, who is leading this race and doing so by coming through the traffic. What a dramatic story of Schrader comes from the rear. And remember, there's a $212,800 bonus if Schrader in this 25 car can win. If you win the pole, and then they have a skins game that's uh, produced by the Unical folks, it's up to $212,000. Only one man won it last year. That was uh, Rusty Wallace in the second race of the year at Rockingham. So that's been accumulating. And into this year, that's the sum total now for which Ken Schrader has an extra incentive. Schrader's car looks like it's on rails, Ken. It's one of the better handling. There he is inside of Jimmy Spencer going in low and edging by him. It's Phil Parsons in the right of the screen. And that He's is for really ninth. going. And fellas, I believe that it was uh, maybe a good luck situation for Ken Schrader to have wrecked the car that he sat on the pole with because this is a better race car, in my opinion, for the race than the other car was. They massaged that other car so much to go fast forward and would run very fast, but there's a difference in running one lap and running for 500 miles, and I think this is a better race car for you. And we had taken the step to meet face-to-face. -face. I was terrified. When I walked in and I saw her standing up, the history of the black quarterback. It's all tonight on ESPN Classic. Back with you live at Daytona. 53 of the 500 miles, about 22 laps knocked down. Taking a look at the standings here, and what a battle is being put on by car number 25. Schrader just keeps running through this thing like he's throwing strikes in a bowling alley. Here he is beneath the four to Bill Elliott. He is closing on the Junior Johnson number 11. Ned, I think this is one of the most dramatic runs I've ever witnessed at Daytona. I'll tell you, you could have gotten some awfully good bets this morning that he would not be able to come through the fact that he would even be in the top 10 at the end of 100 miles. And here, after just over 50 miles, he's up in the top five. Chris, you've been here a lot of years. You've been here since 59. You've seen them all. Have you ever seen anything like this? No, nothing. I just can't get over this. You know, Kenny's a new father. His Annie had a baby. He's going for the lead now. How about that on the inside? What a drive. This is phenomenal. Baby needs a pair of new shoes of what Kenny Schrader said the other day. And he's got these rolling the dice here right now. He's from the back row to second place in 24 laps. And they say you can't pass with these restrictor plates on these cars? <laughs> I I think he brought his own. Let's go to Dave Despain. The car owner, Rick Hendrick, just heard on the radio from Kenny Schrader these words. The car's great. The driver's scared. The team <laughs> manager, Richard Groove, told me this morning you were going to go to the front conservatively. Is this your definition of conservative? Well, he, he's been working traffic. The car's working great. Petty is in trouble. Spinning, sliding to the inside. Richard Petty's car number 43 running in 13th position. Caution is out on the track. First caution of the day. This is in the turns one and two area. And Ken, I believe he's stuck down in the grass. I don't think he can get the car to move him. Richard Petty, who had a brilliant ride in the 125 mile qualifier. And caution is coming out. It will show Schrader in second spot, Earnhardt in the lead. And they say a tire went down on car number 43. Richard Petty's crew There's his crew. They have to be dejected. They were so high, so up for this event after the great performance all week, and particularly in the 125 when he fought his way to the lead. You know, he held it beautifully when he got into trouble. It shows the talent that man has. Look again. He was running behind Phil Parsons in car number four, going along fine, and all of a sudden, the back end just starts to go around. That tire That's Lake Speed going by on the outside as the tire went down. He holds it down on the inside pretty good for a little bit. Then it goes back up the high side of the racetrack. A lot of smoke coming from the car. He never hits the outside wall, though, and brings it back down on the inside. 
Aside from new tires, you ought to be able to get back in it. Yeah, if he can get the thing to go in again. Here he goes. He's finally going now. The left rear tire is flat now. And it'll be a long journey back to the pits. Of course, he has lost at least one lap out there on the racetrack. Well, this is a break. Uh, 60 some miles uh, into the race. It's just time for a pit stop. This is a break for Darrell Waltrip. They've got to work on his car to get that vibration out of it. He may well be a contender. He's not fallen a lap down yet, so he could make it up. First 10 laps were run at an average speed of 188 miles per hour, way off the overall record before the restrictor plate of 199 miles per hour. And for a moment, let's just define these restrictor plates for folks that might have joined us for the first time. A couple of years ago, NASCAR mandated a smaller hole in the a plate that sets on the bottom of the carburetor on top of the intake manifold to restrict the amount of fuel and air that can go into the engine to reduce the horsepower, which in turn reduces the speed of the cars. And it's down to 15 sixteenths. A year ago, it was a one-inch hole. They made it just a tickle smaller, and they say they keep running fast. They've got another 15 options. Here's Dave to Spain. Kenny Schrader's crew must be very careful not to give up any of what their driver has earned them on the racetrack. They've gone to the right side for tires. They will quickly come back. They will They will go to the left. Let's go down pit road to Mike Joy. You see how far out from pit wall all these cars are parked. That's so they have room to do the four-tire change. Junior Johnson's crew done on the right, finishing up on the left. Ricky Rudd further up, maybe a little blocked in if they finish up his left tire change. Ooh, and he almost bumps the Don Levy car and finally squeezes out of there. Tight traffic on Jim Rowan. Watching A.J. Foyt come out for a moment. Now you see Alan Kowicki's car number seven on pit road. Here is Schrader away right behind him, Terry Labonte and Rick Wilson. Lake Speed. It was a long stop for Schrader, far too long. But four tires under caution, and it looks like he feels that he has them that he has this field covered at the moment. Petty down and stopped. Stuck in the grass. That left rear tire is flat now, and it just simply won't pull. The wrecker is going to have to push him in. That's and a tough break. It is a tough break yeah. because the man, I think, had a legitimate shot at winning this race. He had dropped back some, but he had begun to come back towards the front, and uh, then the tire goes down on him. Well, the, the, the question was, in, in a lot of the critics' minds, they, they thought he could go well for the first half. The issue at 52 years of age was going to be the second half, Ned. I don't think that would have been a big problem, Ken. No. I don't, not on this racetrack. See, th there's only 200 laps in the 500-mile race here. If we were at Dover, Delaware, Rockingham, North Carolina, where you go 500 laps, then yes, I'd say that it could be a problem. But I don't think at Daytona that that would have been a big problem for him. I was stunned when I saw the scale and it said 313 pounds. When you're that heavy, you just don't feel good about yourself. And that's when I got on Nutrisystem. I said, I need to do something about it. I'm Mike Golick, and I lost 51 pounds on Nutrisystem. It's time for you to lose weight, too. Order the all-new Nutrisystem Advance. It was easy. The weight started falling off, and I started feeling great about myself. The new Nutrisystem Advance is our best program ever. A new heart-healthy program formulated to help fight your hunger and curb craving. Guys eat real food. Guess what? Nutrisystem is real food. Call or go online now to order your first four weeks of awesome food. And through this special offer, you can get an extra two weeks of meals absolutely free. I have a face for radio, but now I have a body for TV. Every perfectly portioned Nutrisystem advanced meal is delivered right to your door and your shipping is free. No counting, no weigh-ins, no brainer. If you want real results, the kind that gets you noticed, then you have to order Nutrisystem Advance today. You know, my job has me sitting on my butt all day, and I was doing that at 313 pounds. Well, now I'm 51 pounds lighter. The difference? Nutrisystem. About 11 bucks a day gets you four full weeks of satisfying food. That's 140 rib-sticking, perfectly portioned meals. Meals you'll love, guaranteed. Order our four-week men's program now, and you can get an extra 14 breakfasts, 14 lunches, 14 snacks, 14 dinners, and 14 desserts. A full two weeks of food free. If a big old defensive lineman like me can lose weight, so can you. See how Nutrisystem Advanced can change your body, and you can get a full two weeks of food absolutely free. Call now to find out how. Take control, pick up the phone, and lose some weight. Back to green at lap 31. 
with Spencer leading, Earnhardt second, Elliott third, Marlon fourth, Bonnet fifth, Bobby Hill in sixth, Jeff Bodine seventh, Mark Martin in eighth, A.J. Floyd in ninth, Derek Cope in tenth, Carson showing 11th on the start. And for the fans wondering about Richard Petty's car, they took it back behind the wall, Ken. They are working on it, and hopefully they'll get it back in as Earnhardt goes for the lead. Battle for the lead. Down to the bottom of the racetrack comes car number three, and the Chevrolet of Earnhardt moves around car number 57, the Pontiac of Jimmy Spencer. Dave Despain. Trainer's team is not concerned about wear and tear on the engine. They feel the reason they've been able to get to the front so handily is the handling of the race car. They feel they're not having to work the power plant that hard. They don't want to have to come from the back all day long. But if they have to, they think that motor could uh, could last with no problem, Chris. But keep in mind, crew chiefs always talk like that. But, fellas, now that with the restrictor plates, they're only turning these engines about 75 to 7,600 RPMs. When they don't run restrictor plates, they turn them about 82 or 8,300 RPMs and that's why it's so much harder on them to run in the high RPMs. Now here are the positions as they came to caution and on the restart after that pit stop. Earnhardt fell just a spot. Schrader was the big loser all the way back to 15th there as they continue to sort themselves out in scary manner up there in the banking. Bodine giving us this view as Bobby Hillen dives down on the inside. They almost touch here. And here's Darrell Waltrip looking a lot better now than he did before the yellow. Waltrip on the left of his car. I was thinking that was Bobby Hillen's car down in there. Let's take a look as they come back into the corner. Right in front is Jimmy Spencer. Get a sense of that 31 degree banking. It really throws you up there. You really carry a G load down in there, Ned. Yes, you do. And I think the point that 25, 20 made a big difference in back since the green flag came out and I think the, the fact that they did only put on two tires on that car has hurt him. Here's car number five Ricky Rudd right up there with Phil Parsons field out of turn four. Jeff Bodine at the controls. Junior Johnson car Schrader right there beside him. Schrader's car didn't seem break. to be as uh, superior since the pit stop as it did before the pit stop. Well, he's coming back know. to eighth, yeah. 15th. Yeah, and he's passing the best cars on the track. So Here he is. He's, he's up under a Neil Bonnet. That would move him another couple of spots. He's headed for seventh. He's pulling along with car number eight, Bobby Hillen. I wonder how many of the other cars are. Schrader's gone in front of them. Well, he's up to what, fifth, sixth? Here he is, working on Ricky Rudd. Well, Rudd's currently running in the ninth position. I beg your pardon. Here's the 25 car behind Parsons. Got my green and white cars mixed up there. Here's Petty's car being worked on back in the garage area. Of course, with all that mud and grass under there, they have a little bit more to do to it than just put four tires on it. They gotta check everything out to be sure that everything is safe. Earnhardt first, Elliott second. Amazing they've run this far with 40 cars still in the lead lap. Here's the number 11 car down to the bottom. And sneak his way up through comes the Jeff Bodine machine. See if we can find out what's going on with Richard Petty's car. Phil Parsons slowing down pretty dramatically out there. Looked like he might be coming in. Let's go to David Hobbs. Well, Ken, the big problem with Richard Petty's car is that when all four tires went down, it dropped under the exhaust pipe. And they're having a heck of a job trying to straighten that out. They keep jamming rods down it and opening it up, but it's very, very flat under the car, and they had a tremendous job getting the jack under it. That's all four tires changed. They've done a few bits and pieces. The bodywork generally is very good, but underneath, this car has taken a bit of a pounding on the pavement. Out on the Petty's track, there. leader Dale Earnhardt is coming up on the movie cars, and there we go. He's in the film, Days of Thunder. <laughs> They pitted for a while. They were in for uh, several laps and came back out. Well, you hope to get their pictures in a hurry because he went by pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> They're just running 100 miles, and they are not being scored. Two machines out here for that motion picture. Ken, you mentioned Phil Parsons going into the pits there just a moment ago. He had a change of right side tires. He's going back out, but he's going a lap down to the field. Tough break for Phil Parsons. He was in for about 26 seconds. 
Schrader in the 25 car is now up to six. He's around Derek Cope. There's Mark Martin in the six and Sterling Marlin in the blue car, number 94 on the outside. Leader yep. continues to be Earnhardt. Bill Elliott's been sort of quiet down here during speed weeks this year, but uh, now Ken Schrader passes another car, but uh, Elliott's car running very strong, staying right there with Earnhardt. So a lot of people feel that he will be a factor in this race, and certainly has shown so far that he has some muscle in his sport. Two-time winner of the event, Elliott in the nine, and look at Schrader in the green and white, car number 25, continuing to slip up through here, try to run him down. Promotional consideration brought to you by Echo Unlimited. Echo Unlimited. We are Unlimited. Pick a city, then get a four-star hotel at a two-star price from Hotwire.com. When four-star hotels have unsold rooms, they use Hotwire to fill them. So you get the lowest prices guaranteed. H-O-T-W-I-R-E, Hotwire.com. When you put up a fat head, you're making a statement too big for words. A statement like this. <laughs> Maybe you need something more. How about the NFL, NBA, MLB, NASCAR? If you can think of a sports-related acronym, we probably got a fat head for you. The biggest names and moments captured at the height of intensity, plucked from the playing field like ripened fruit that can smack you in your ear hole. Nice work, fellas. Hall of Famers, ex-gamers, QB sackers, revitalized Packers, I'm starting to rhyme and I like it. Fat head, a passion that's been building and building, so put it in your building. Get your favorite fatheads from the NFL, plus MLB, NBA, NASCAR, and more. Go to fathead.com now. Four paws and one big shaggy heart. Doesn't he deserve to be covered too? Introducing pet injury coverage from Progressive. Now when Progressive covers your car, we cover your pet at no extra charge. Now that's Progressive. Go to Progressive.com or call a local independent agent. One sport, one full day of classic sports action. Saturday, it's an ESPN Classic Weekend Marathon that puts you in the driver's seat. Place your bids. The hottest wheels are up for grabs in the Russell and Steel Car Auction Marathon. Saturday, 8 a.m. on ESPN Classic. It's a live college basketball doubleheader. Starts Saturday at 6. The second caution of the day came after a four-car crash on the 43rd lap involving Phil Parsons, Mike Alexander, Alan Kowicki, and rookie Robbie Morosa. Many drivers, including Richard Petty, Ken Schrader, and Davey Allison, took advantage of the yellow flag to pit. Following the restart, Dale Earnhardt led the field with Derek Cope and Mark Martin in pursuit. Let's rejoin the race in the 56th lap with Ken Schrader continuing to push his way back toward the front. Calling the shots once again is in that white and green number 25. Schrader racing Lake Speed in the 83. They're still slicing back up through the field. This car, number 25, has made it all the way to the top twice in the rear. Currently is 14th and closing up on Terry Labonte. You know, Chris, I don't believe that car is coming back up through the pack quite as good as he did a little bit earlier. He's having trouble. That's uh, Ken Schrader, car number 25, having trouble now getting around late speed. I'm sure that a lot of the others have made adjustments on their cars during these pit stops, and certainly that has helped them to, to maintain better speeds than they were running earlier. I think Speed's car and this last pit stop got the register just right there. And there's Schrader cutting down low on the track. Obviously trouble here for the driver who qualified on the pole and started in the back row, heading for the pits now. Hopefully the trouble is not terminal. A well, tough break for, Sh for Schrader in the Lumina. Looked like there might have been a little smoke from the car, Chris, and certainly this would be an unscheduled pit stop for Ken Schrader. Boy, what a run he has had here today. And now all of a sudden headed to the pits, Dale Earnhardt, 
continues to lead this race. A Schrader down on the inside. It looks like just coasting to the pits. Of course, his crew will be there ready for him when he comes in as we watch that big pack of cars up front. We mentioned uh, we mentioned earlier today about Schrader's emotions, all the trouble he's had here, going from the front to the back, wrecking in Thursday's race. Now here, the big disappointment in the 500. Well, he's running in a very thick pass bunch of cars there right now. That's Michael Waltrip right directly behind him. As we watch Schrader now coming on into the pits, he finally has made it to his pit area. We'll see if it's something that they will be able to repair. I'm sure that he's had conversation with the crew on the radio and he's going behind the wall. Let's go to the pits and Dave to Spain. The clock has struck midnight on the Cinderella story, but perhaps only temporarily. They will go under the hood and try to determine what has happened here and whether or not the damage is terminal. Richard Broom goes to talk with his driver while the crew, for the moment, look, shake their hands, and try to determine what happened. Cheech Gardy, any idea what's happened here? Motor. Blown? Yeah. Terminal? Yeah. Nobody's hurrying to do anything here. I got a feeling this one is all done. Kenny Schrader is climbing out of his car, and it looks like it's all over for the man who sat on the pole here today and drove so magnificently through the first two rounds of green flag racing. Schrader taking off the helmet. Kenny, what happened? I guess something in the, something in the engine let go. I mean, it was it was working good, you know. It just uh, something finally gave up, and that don't happen to the Hendricks team very often. So it just happened here. Chris Economaki speculated that two charges to the front might be taking a lot out of the motor. Did you feel you were using up your car driving that hard? Nah, you ain't using the motor any harder here. Run the back of that deal or run to the front. Talk to me, if you can, about the frustration of what's happened to you over the last two years. Here. Ain't been no real bad week. Uh, I mean, we still, you know, we got, we got the pole, we got the clash. We run good in the 25s, and I think we could have done good today. I think so, too, and I think one of these years he will come down here and complete the package. But again, this year, Kenny Schrader has come up short at Daytona International Speedway. And the $212,000 bonus for winning the pole in the 500 moves to Richmond, Virginia next week and becomes $220,000. Two of the major factors, Richard Petty right here and again out of the pits, obviously not a chance to win. Kenny Schrader out of it before we get to 175 miles and the attrition is starting to take its toll. As Ned Jarrett was pointing out, that is a Hendrick engine that is in that car running in second place. Here's Earnhardt's look in the last 10 years of Daytona 500-mile competition. Come close, been up that top five time after time, but it's always eluded him at the finish. He came the closest in 86, looked like it was his. And then, for a thimble full of fuel, he would have traded his kingdom. Jeff Bodine came home victorious. As they say, close, but no cigar. <laughs> Alan Kowicki's back in the race after 19 minutes and 45 seconds in the pit. He's 19 laps down, but he persists. Jeff Bodine, picture from car number 11, maintaining fourth position in the 500. And we see Mark Martin directly in front of him, a pair of Fords running together. 63 laps are complete. There has been very little interval on those front cars today, Chris. They've been bundled up from the outset. A lot of the contenders remaining in the lead lap. There's 200 laps in this race, and you can say 63 have been run. Dale Earnhardt leads, Derek Cope is second, Mark Martin third, Jeff Bodine fourth, and Rick Wilson next in line. Yeah, Monster, how can I help you, Miss Ripa? Yeah, I'm not really having the best day, and now my check engine light's on. I'm not sure why. I'll run a diagnostic test on your Yukon Denali now. I'm showing here at your gas cap. Did you fill up recently? Oops. <laughs> my Acadia just emailed me. Yeah, it's my OnStar diagnostic report. Engine, tire pressure, anti-lock brakes. Everything's fine. It just wanted to let me know. My car never emails me. You don't have to be a star to get the OnStar treatment. OnStar, active. Available on most GMC models. Winter X Games 12 on ESPN. Thursday, on the opening night of Winter X, the snowmobilers take the spotlight in the brand new speed and style event. Monster flip! Then... Defending gold medalist Tanner Hall looks to three-peat as he takes on the young guns of skiing superpipe. And he nails it! It's all good! Winter X Games 12 starts Thursday at 9 Eastern, live on ESPN. 
Here at the three, I'm Tony Orlando. And, and I gotta be honest, I was embarrassed to get this fat. But now, I've lost 103 pounds at the tender age of 63. Introducing the all-new Nutrisystem Advanced, our healthiest, easiest weight loss program ever, including our silver plan, designed for older Americans. Nutrisystem makes it easy for you to lose weight, and I never feel hungry. Every perfectly portioned Nutrisystem meal is delivered right to your door, free. And there's a money-back guarantee. Look, this is a 50 waist. Forget it, it's over. I'm a 34, thanks to Nutrisystem. And it's affordable. For only about $10 a day, you can enjoy four weeks of silver meals. Order now and find out how you can get an extra two weeks of delicious meals, plus a 30-day supply of our specially formulated vitamins free. Don't go through another day fat. You don't have to. Call now to find out how. Heart continues to dominate. Let's go back to Daytona on the 89th lap where Earnhardt is increasing his lead over Derek Cope and Jeff Bodine. The view from the Goodyear Blimp Enterprise of the Winston Tower here at the Daytona Speedway sold out. Captain Drew Marshall and company from Pompano Beach giving us these incredible pictures of this great racing facility. And we take a look at the rundown after 200 miles have been completed. We're actually moving toward the halfway point. One more lap and there will be 90 laps down, 10 laps to go, two cross flags in the event. 30 cars are running in the lead lap as you saw that run down. All the, the, cro the crowd here today, Ken, the largest in the first time in the history of Daytona Speedway, they let no cars in the infield after last night. The infield was full all night long. Not a single spectator's car was permitted in the infield this morning. Checking that interval and stretching to four seconds between number three Earnhardt and then number 10, Derek Cope from Spanaway, Washington, Jeff Bodine in the Junior Johnson red number 11 Ford in second. These are lap cars. That's Alan Kowicki right there. And we Earnhardt coming into the pit. Road. It's the leader. The leader is on pit road just before halfway. Here's Dave Despain. And it will be follow the leader here on pit road. The pure later team of Derek Cope is ready to go right behind Earnhardt. Here comes the leader in. And he's going four tires on the right side. Chocolate Myers goes for the gas. It looks like it'll be right sides only. And right behind him, Derek Cope should be coming down pit road as he is expecting to make his stop on the same lap. The crew standing by. Earnhardt in and out. And still, Cope has not come on pit road as expected. Now he has taken over the lead, Dave. As a matter of fact, uh, Bill Elliott came in, but Elliott just got into the pits. Now Derek Cope coming into the pits. Elliott just got in as Earnhardt was going out. But Derek Cope dips down now to come into the pits. The Chevrolet number 10. How about that pit stop on Earnhardt? That seems slow. Uh, well, 15.95 seconds for two tires. That is slow. I tell you, it took more time to put in the gas than it did to change the tires. Uh, here's Derek Cope making his pit stop. This is the Whitcomb Racing Team. They come from the state of New Hampshire. You'd think that is an unusual spot, but let's go to Dave Despain. Buddy Parrott playing the strategist here, elected to stay out one more lap. He told us he'd follow Earnhardt into the pits. He did not do that. He stayed out. He led the race for a lap and now goes to the right side tires. It was a slow stop for Earnhardt. The problem was with gas. The stop for Cope will be even slower at 17.21 for a much less experienced pit crew. They're back under will. Davey Allison moving up through now in the car number 28. Now that really looked like the kind of uh, garage I'd like to go to. Didn't get any <laughs> free mugs or glasses, but they certainly got him in and out. That's listen. right, no dishes. But listen, here he's in a minute and 14 seconds in the pits under a yellow flag a while ago. Now he's leading over Jeff Bodine and Terry Levani. So they did get the front end fixed right. They got the toe in towed right, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. Robert Yates, he, he'll tweak it till it's right. Crew chief on car number 28 for Davey Allison. Remember last year, right here in the backstretch, he rolled over yep. and kept on running, slid into the grass, went wheel to wheel. It looked like one of those old Economacki shows on a quarter mile track in New Jersey. <laughs> What's Jeff Bodine waving about, Ned? He might be coming into the pits. No, Davey Allison is coming into the pits. Jeff Bodine going by on the outside. Look at Let's the, see him. Look at the work, how hard Bodine yeah. is working from that in car shot. That's interesting. Now, Davey Allison comes into the pits, he gives up the lead. Brett Bodine going out of the pits. It's green flag pit stop time for scheduled pit stops for everybody. Let's watch Mark Martin now as he comes in and his crew. 
Here's the number six coming in for its stop. This is how the driver sees it. You're watching it live in the 30-second 500. And that's Robin Pemberton, his crewman, changing that tire. With the crew cam on, that's the way that, they, that he's seeing it. Let's go to Mike Joy. Right side tires only for Mark Martin. Remember, they got gas only on that last pit stop. They get a full two cans and send Martin out. 15 seconds. And a third. That isn't bad. Takes, as Ned said, it takes a while for the gas to get in. A lot of jerky movements there. And here he is, back on the track, tooling up on the track. Well, earlier this week, this is the man I had picked to win this race, Mark Martin, because of so much testing and so much determination on everyone's part from Ralph Race, from Roush Racing. Everybody comes in determined, but they just did so much work over the winter. But I got to tell you, I had a change about Thursday with Earnhardt's performance. Now, Ken, he's all the way on the back stretch and just now put it in fourth gear. They put a very high third gear ratio in there so they can keep the RPMs up on the engine and they go way around the track before they finally put it into high gear. Starts Saturday at 6, only on ESPN Classic. Kyle Petty, number 42, back on the track, not currently in the top 20. Here's number 11, Jeff Bodine, the leader, the 86 champion. Now, remember, he got very good gas mileage the other day, but now he's, he's coming pitted. in for some gas. And Dick Trickle, at number 66, making himself known on the outside. Back to Mike Joy, waiting on Jeff Bodine. Shorty, Shorty Edwards has the signboard out. Tim Brewer has the wrench in hand, ready to go to work on the car that went the distance to win the qualifying race Thursday. Brewer around the right side on the front. Mike Hill around the right rear tire. The jack man is Pete Wright. Henry Benfield back with Junior's team after some stints with other shops has that first gas can in the air and it's away. Duck Betty has the catch can ready as Benfield puts in that second can. They're doing all four tires. Mark Cass has already loosened up the left side. Lug nuts. Junior Johnson looking on. Tim Brewer hammers the nuts home at the front. Mike Hill at the back. 22.5 seconds for two cans of gas and four tires. That's it because that belongs to the pit stop, but he's got four tires. Bill Elliott was 18 and 5, 100 seconds, one of the slowest of the Ford pit stop. Davey Allison was the fastest of the Ford men at 14.1, but he only got two tires. So Bodine now, Junior Johnson, uh, wants to do it his way, kept him in there that extra time, so he's good now for another 100 miles. That Sounds could, like a good move. Yeah, I think that's good strategy, really. Uh, the car perhaps wasn't working quite as good as he wanted to. Darrell Waltrip now coming into the pits, and as we see Jeff Bodine looking at the tachometer and uh, getting that car up to speed. But I think that was a good move on their part to put all four tires on. Here's Darrell Waltrip in the pits. Car number 17, he's been running up in the top 20, was 19th on the last rundown. Quick stop for Waltrip. Now he's going to take off in first gear as we see him go out of the pits. When he gets down about the end of pit road, he'll come down into second gear. Here he goes now, about to change into second gear. But they have to stay down on the inside of the racetrack as they go out. There's a line. You see that yellow line? Then it becomes white. And they stay down below the line that you see right on the right side. Then they can blend into traffic. He's up in third gear now. But you see he's going to be out of turn two before he'll ever put it back into fourth gear. There he finally did it. Got the RPMs up. And We'll tie a yellow ribbon around the old wool tree. I'm Tony Allen. Call now to find out how. Leader at the present time is car number three, Dale Earnhardt. But the man who came across the line as they were dipping into the pits for fuel at the halfway point was car number 33, Harry Gant. And Gant collected the $10,000 prize for leading at halfway. The only lap Harry Gant has left all day worth and 10 it, grand. And, and then he did it across the start, I mean, in the pits. He was coming down pit road when the halfway signal was being given, but the start finish line goes all the way across the pit road, and uh, so if, he led the lap. If his pit had been before the starting stripe, he wouldn't have gotten it. That's right. Yeah. Ah, uh, we have some weather moving, and we had a cold front come through last night that gave us a lot of rain, and heaven knows they need it down here in Florida. And from NASCAR control, there is a look at what's moving into this area. We're better than halfway, which would make the race official in case it had to be terminated by showers. But right now, it looks like we're going to go the distance. Let's go to Mike Joy. Ken Lake Speed was leading this race when he ran out of gas. He was trying to stretch it that extra half lap and take the halfway challenge money. He came up just short. This is one of the few teams that does not use a computer.
computer for fuel mileage. They keep all of their lap times and predict when they'll make their pit stops on paper. Here's David Hobbs. Well, I'm in the pits with one of the most incredible people probably in the whole race ground today, and that is Rick Hendrick, whose cars were on the front row today and last year, and your very first trip to Daytona itself was only in 1983. Where do you go to next? I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping we were going to go to Victory Lane today with one of our cars. It's a long race, and Schrader's out of it now, but, uh, you know, they're running good, and we always like to do well down here. We've had a lot of tremendous success. Uh, this is a place that uh, we want to always do well. It's a Super Bowl of our sport. Well, first and second last year, Ken Schrader made an amazing run to the front. What did you think of that? Did you expect it? Well, you know, we told him to get to the front as quick as he could, but be careful. And uh, I've never seen a car come through the pack, especially since we've been running the restrictor plate as well as that car did. Kenny did a heck of a job of driving, and just a credit to the setup and the car with the backup car to come to the front in 20-some laps. So. And he was just taking it easy when we had a, had a failure, but uh, that's racing. Well, unlike most owners down here, you've got two more shots in the locker. You've got Ricky Rudd and Darrell Waltrip. Can either of those two guys win this race yet? Darrell is getting comfortable. He's adjusting the car. He feels okay. Ricky's really happy with his car. He's been running in the top ten all day. And they're just waiting to get them right there at the end. It's no sense in going out there racing right now as hard as you can go. So I've, we've got our hopes up, and we, we're going to run them hard there all day. Well, you've sort of started to take over NASCAR front row twice in a row. Uh, any other plans after NASCAR days? Not right now. We want to win the championship this year. We're working awful hard towards that goal. You know, the, all the teams are doing well, and we're just excited about what we've got to look forward to this year. We've had a great year last year. We're off to a good start. So we're just going to try to do the best we can with what we got. Okay, well, that's Rick Hendrick, a very powerful man in NASCAR circles, but a bit disappointed today. Ken? The second-place battle is where the story is right now. There lies Derek Cope in the Whitcomb car. Number 10, Terry Labonte there, Jeff Bodine, Rick Wilson all in the mix, lapping number 42, Kyle Petty, the Felix Savetta's car in the bottom of the racetrack. Here's Mark Martins, number 6, that lies, that was lying 6. He tries to move beneath Rick Wilson. Rick tagging along with his old buddy, A.J. It had to be the halfway mark before Rusty Wallace became a factor, and he's moved into the top ten, the defending national champion. Here he is taking a look uh, on the track there with the champion, Rusty Wallace, into the main straightaway. That's Dick Trickle right in front of him in the number 66 drop Arctic car. They're running eighth and ninth now. Trickle running in the eighth position, Rusty running in ninth. And Joe Rutman, a lap car just on the bottom there as they approach turn number one. But Dale Earnhardt has pulled out to about a 10-second lead over Dave, Derek Cope, who is running in second place. This is remarkable, the performance of Earnhardt's car. Uh, 10 seconds is an unheard-of lead here these days. Now, looks like Atlanta at the end of the season. Richard Petty is back on pit road. Atlanta last year, final race. Earnhardt just ground everybody down before he won that 500. Petty came in a little bit crossways. He was about to lose it coming into the pits and didn't get into the pits uh, quite as straight as he would like to have, but this is an unscheduled pit stop for Petty. Right side tires, maybe going around for left side too. Again, the King had trouble here. Cut a tire down in turn one. He did a masterful job of keeping it out of the wall and able to continue. You know, one of the things that just puzzles me, always will puzzle me, is why it is when one of these cars has a soft tire the driver nor the crew can tell which one it is, and they have to change all four. Why is that, Ned? Well, it's very difficult at these speeds because on the high banks of a track like this, there's so much pressure on each tire, it's difficult to tell. You can tell that one is down, the car will get loose, but it's very difficult to tell which tire it is. Dale Earnhardt continues to blitz him here in the Daytona 500, looking for his first win in the Great American Race. Sundays on ESPN Classic. Saturday, it's an ESPN Classic weekend marathon that puts you in the driver's seat. Dale Earnhardt has increased his lead to 12 seconds, while Derek Cope and Jeff Bodine continue to battle for second place. Let's head back to the Speedway, where Dale Earnhardt has led for 100 of 126 laps. Dale Earnhardt running slowly only because... He just pitted car number three. He's just come out of the pits. He's into the back straightaway, picking up speed in that machine. And it's given Jeff Bodine the lead with Rick Wilson, Ricky Rudd, and that crowd. 
on pit on the back stretch at the present time. Because Derek Cope made a pit stop also. Dave Despain is with the man making the call on Earnhardt's call car, Richard Childress. And Childress still checking with his driver to make sure everything went smoothly. A nice pit stop. Are you happy with the way it turned out? Yeah, it looked real good and clean. You know, we wanted to do four tires and not take no chance. You know, to get the car back, get the stagger all back like we wanted. We had a 13 second lead, so we were able to do it. My question is, how much do you want to lead this race by? How are you determining how far out there you want to run, how hard to run the car? Well, we wanted to get about 12 seconds on them then to do a four tire and be real safe in case they done two, but we want to lead the last lap. Are you going to continue to press for that big lead from here, or are you going to stay back a little? Yeah, we're going to, you know, we just run the same pace all day. That's our plan. That pace has been right around 48 seconds, high 47s when he was clear of traffic. It built a huge lead before the pit stop. Let's see what Childress man can do now with a fresh horse. Uh, Dale Earnhardt's pit stop, though, was 23.9 seconds for the four tires. Well, Derek Cope stop, he got two tires in 15 and a half seconds. The interesting thing to me is the timing of the stop. Earnhardt is going to have to make one more stop for fuel before this race gets a checkered flag. Wilson, Marlin, Michael Waltrip, Dick Trickle, Neil Bonnet, all making green flag stops. Jimmy Means, Lake Speed at this point. Jeff Bodines, number 11, is your leader. And number five, Ricky Rudd, now takes over in second spot. Third, number one, Terry Labonte. Front three, the fourth car would become Rusty Wallace. Remember, he started way back on this field, Chris, and he's developed himself a, a contender now. He took just, his time. You know, his drive has not been the typical Wallace swashbuckling, wall-to-wall, hard-charging drive. He's been very consistent, and he's doing extremely well up there in fifth place with 150 miles to go. And he started 38th on the field. These are green flag stops. Earnhardt willing to give up that lead for that four-tire change. This is the battle for the lead. And here's Rudd alongside Jeff Bodine and going for it. The Ford on the inside, the Chevy on the outside. And Rudd uh, makes it look relatively easy there. Both of those drivers will have pit stops coming up here very shortly as well. You know, there's only been two caution flags so far. It's the fewest since 1975 when they had three. But three of the first four Daytona 500s were run with no yellow flag. Here's number five, Ricky Rudd, now out in front, and Rusty Wallace, who's carved his way up through the field. He's come in for fuel now. He's on pit road. This is your front three cars, Ricky Rudd in car number five, Jeff Bodine in car number 11, and Terry Labonte in car number one. Looks to me like uh, number five, Ricky Rudd's getting ready. He ran that yep. car out of fuel in a 125-mile qualifier, and he's diving onto pit road. Here's Rusty Wallace pulling back on the track after he stopped for fuel and road. At the corner of Hallis and Landry, there was a titanic clash of muck and man. The Mud Bowl. By game's end, the two teams... Oh, right now, for the perfect push-up. Call 1-800-543-0376. Ricky Rudd in for his stop, and they're doing it a little different, Waddell Wilson's team. Not right, but left side tires for Rudd's car. To adjust the stagger that way, they changed the rights last time. They changed the tires quickly. Then they have to wait for that final bit of gas to dribble down, and then Rudd is away. And as he comes out, car number one, Terry Labonte has just slipped under number 11. And Terry Labonte went sideways. Boy, he really did yeah. get sideways. Oh. <laughs> and hold on. He did a good job of bringing it back in. Jeff Bodine now coming down pit road. He, for his pit stop, we'll watch him come in. Shorty Edwards out there with the pit board. Brave souls, those that goes out there with that pit board, but Shorty stays right there with him. And of course, he comes around to clean the grill off the car while they change the right side tires and fill it up with gas. Sooner or later, you take that job, you do get upended. You become a hood ornament. Yeah, I said right side tires. There are two, like the car number five, changed left side tires. Now, remember the last time they changed right side, so this time they changed left side tires. Pretty good pit time, 14 and a half seconds. Yet all of the contenders that are stopping now will have to stop at least one more time before this race is over. Let's take a look from inside one of the cars as we watch what happened to uh, Terry Labonte. This is Bodine's pictures of car number one. Woo. 
Labonte, as he started off at turn four, the back end broke loose, but he did a great job of saving that car. Oh, what, about, what about the driver in Bodine's position? You're watching this happen directly in front of you. He was very, very cautious at that time as we look at it from another angle as the back end gets loose, and Bodine, I'm sure, that backed off this side. Well, not much. He's coming up on him, but he sees that Terry apparently is going to get it straightened out, so he just uh, barrels on around. Terry Labonte's number one. The one thing you don't want to do is overcorrect. Here's Mike Joy. Tim Brewer is crew chief for Jeff Bodine. Tim, you were in not that long ago for four tires, and you're right back in for left. Well, Earnhardt seems to have a slight advantage over us, as you can probably see, so we're going to have to change up a little bit, see if we can change the strategy in here and maybe get a little bit closer to him for the, for the shootout here later on. It's one of those deals, we're going to stop and get gas, and he's going to stop and get gas, and we're going to let them two guys have at it, Mike. If it comes down to a drag race, can you run with him? He's awful strong. And we'll see. <laughs> Back upstairs. 142 laps are complete, and it's getting down to that time when gamblers play the long odds in the great American race. Terry Labonte, car number one, leads at this moment. Bobby Hill in his second, and Earnhardt's back to third. Well, I was shopping for a new car. Which one's me? A cool convertible or an SUV? Too bad I didn't know my credit was whack because now I'm driving off the lot in a used subcompact. F-R-E-E, -E, that spells free. Creditreport.com, baby. Saw their ads on my TV. Thought about going but was too lazy. Now instead of looking fly and rolling fat, my legs are sticking to the vinyl and my posse's getting laughed at. F-R-E-E, -E, that spells free. Creditreport.com, baby. Offer applies with enrollment and triple advantage. The perfect hot wire getaway. Shop till you drop. Relax by the pool. At a four-star hotel for a two-star price from Hotwire.com. When four-star hotels have unsold rooms, they use Hotwire to fill them. So you get them at prices lower than any other travel site. Guaranteed. Like four stars in Chicago. Travelocity price, 179 Hotwire price, just 92 So live a little and save a lot. Hotwire.com. Four-star hotels, two-star prices. H-O-T-W-I-R-E, Hotwire.com. Welcome to Progressive.com. Did you find your policy okay? I did. Saved over $350. We have a savings of $350. A savings of $350. You know, that comes with concierge claim service, local response claim service, and 24-7 live support, all at no extra charge. Wow. Wow, I know. I say it louder. Have a great day. Lots of extra features that don't cost you extra. Now that's Progressive. Call or click today. Every Saturday, ESPN Classic goes live with college basketball's hottest matchups. This week, it's a live doubleheader. At 6, Rutgers heads to Pitt to try and tame Sam Young in the ferocious Panther attack. Banks it home! Then at 9, Arkansas brings its winning ways to the Maravich Center to take on SEC rival LSU. That is strength, my friends. It's a live college basketball doubleheader. It starts Saturday at 6, only on ESPN Classic. Here is Jimmy Spencer's car on pit road that's been running up here with the leaders. And the one car that has been leading, car number one, is in the pits. Terry Labonte, here's Dave Despain. Leader on pit road, Roger Fortney goes to the right front. Tony Lambert to the right rear as they clean the windshield and gas the car. Labonte trying to get in and out and salvage this lead, although that's going to be very difficult to do as they will go to a four-tire stop. Gary Brooks going to the right side of the car now to jack it up. Roddy Acoff finishing his fueling responsibilities ahead of the tires. That is uh, all done, and now they're just waiting to get the tires on and out the door. 25-9, the time. Let's go to Mike Joy. Mark Martin had left side tires, but that didn't improve the handling of his board enough. Now it's right side tires. They're checking things over, and Martin is waiting for a cold drink. It is hot inside the cockpit of that Ford. Steve Emile and Robert Pemberton with our pit cam working the right front, having a little extra time getting that right front wheel secured. Now they're all set, just waiting to drop the jack, finishing up on the right rear. Lengthy pit stop, excru excruciatingly long for Martin Martin. A miscue, and he goes away with two fresh tires. Yeah. And you can see that frustration on his face as he goes out of the pits. That was much longer than he wanted to be in there. And, Mike, it looked like that they might have made a chassis adjustment on the right front before they put the right front tire on there. They were doing something under there. And 
when you make an adjustment on the right front spring, it has more effect on the chassis than any other spring around the car. Now, whether that's what they were doing, I don't know, but they did something under that right front, a little bit extra besides changing the tire. It was almost 42 seconds in the pits. Uh, I was on the impression they weren't allowed to make those front end adjustments. Oh, yeah. They, well, they can make the adjustments. They can't change springs. At one time, they could actually change springs, but they can't do that. But if they got the tire off, they can make that, uh, that adjustment under there. Well, that was a long, long stop. It's going to have to be a very beneficial adjustment for them to make up the lost time. And well, here's the man now out in front, Bobby Hillen in car number eight. Harry Hyde prepared car for the Stavola brothers. <laughs> but um, he has yet to make Snickers a pit stop. Man. Yeah. Bobby Hillen, <laughs> Harry Hyde says there's three places to run in the race, with the good or with the bad or with the ugly out here. And from their starting point today, they really came out of meanness and they moved their way back up through the field. He says he doesn't like cars to start too far back in these races. <laughs> They've had a good run. This team has a second car just for testing its truck and the crew. It's as though they were going racing or they go to test tracks just to make sure the car is right for the track. And it looks now like it's paying off. Let's take a look at the Budweiser leaderboard. After 350 miles, Terry Levante was then leading with Bobby Hillen in second, Earnhardt third. Earnhardt's now up to second, Darrell Waltrip. Taking a look at that second five, Bill Elliott still in there. We have 11 cars in the lead lap on our Budweiser scoreboard. And at that point, the 11th car was being shown uh, as, as Wallace with Wilson and number five, Ricky Rudd in those tail end positions. We now have perhaps a sleeper on our hands, Bobby Hillen may be able to make it to the checkered flag on the onboard fuel. He's the only one on the track right now that couldn't do that. He's Dave in Despain. the pits right now. Uh, trouble. Harry Hyde, the man who has built this team into a contender, waits with the sideboard. His young driver, Bobby Hillen, comes down pit road, overshoots the pit. Hyde is known for bringing along young talent, and he gave this man his first super speedway win. As they clean the windshield, Hyde's team go to work. It's a crew that he's had around him for years, and they are going to go to the right side, then come back to change the left side tires. Again, they will outlap. The, the fueling will not take as long as the tire change, unlike a two-tire stop. And the leader, Bobby Hillen, gives up the lead. The crew get their words. He's out in 25-9. Let's go to Mike Schroeder. Well, Robert Pemberton is here. You can see he's wearing his adornment, our CBS pit cam. You guys aren't having your usual fun day. What happened? What'd you do on that last pit stop? Well, uh, there's a header pipe dragging right now uh, a little bit. It's not handling real good, and we're we're working on it as hard as we can. Uh, something happened about 60 laps ago. We've been running real good, and all of a sudden it's it's just super loose, and we can't seem to do anything to fix it. What adjustment did you make on the right front to try to fix the handle? Mainly, we're looking for a problem, uh, something that was broke, and making the car handle as bad as it is. Uh, so far, we haven't found anything. They're perplexed here in the Mark Martin pit. The man who's perplexing everyone here is this man, the man in black, Dale Earnhardt, back in command of the Daytona 500 with 151 laps complete. Why are energy drinks bad? 12 spoons of sugar? That's bad. 200 calories? Bad. Guarana? Tisk tisk. Good for a short jittery burst, then a debilitating crash. So don't drink energy drinks. Drink 5-Hour Energy. It's not a drink, more like a sip. But with that sip, you'll feel alert and focused for hours, without the crash or jitters. It has zero sugar, only four calories, and no guarana. Five-hour energy. Hours of energy now. No crash later. A fathead. It's got real presence. You probably can't feel it from where you are. So we put this together. It's getting closer. Hmm. Maybe you need something more. How about the NFL, NBA, MLB, NASCAR? If you can come up with a sports-related acronym, we've probably got a fathead for you. The biggest names and moments captured at the height of intensity, plucked from the playing field like ripe fruit that will smack you in your ear hole. Nice work, fellas. Hall of Famers, ex-gamers, QB sackers, revitalized Packers. I'm starting to rhyme, and I like it. Fathead. A passion that's been building and building, so put it in your building. Get your favorite fatheads from NASCAR, plus the NFL, NBA, MLB, and more. Go to fathead.com now. 
One sport, one full day of classic sports action. Saturday, it's an ESPN Classic Weekend Marathon that puts you in the driver's seat. Place your bids. The hottest wheels are up for grabs in the Russo and Steel Car Auction Marathon. Saturday, 8 a.m. on ESPN Classic. Every Sunday morning, ESPN Classic is your place to see a replay of this week's best college basketball game. Oh, my goodness! The ESPN College Basketball Game of the Week. 9 a.m. Sundays, only on ESPN Classic. And here is the leader, car number three, Earnhardt. And right now, Earnhardt has been following Dick Trickle for three laps, unable to pass. And er this Trickle is running on the tail end of the lead lap on our latest rundown at 150 laps. Car number 66, Earnhardt, was being shown, or rather number 66, Trickle, was being shown in 13th place on the end of the lead lap of Mr. Earnhardt. I think this is a new conservatism Dale Earnhardt is showing us here. He wouldn't wait ordinarily to pass somebody, but he's sort of tiptoeing behind Dick Trickle. And was critical of Trickle in the 125-mile qualifier for using up a lot of racetrack. Well, of course, Trickle was leading the race at that time, and Earnhardt had made a pit stop and came up on him and was not able to get around him for quite a while because Trickle knows how to use a racetrack and uh, is doing a good job of it right now. Now, yeah. also, Trickle put on four new tires, as Earnhardt did on their last pit stop, but Earnhardt made his pit stop about 12 laps before Trickle did, and so Trickle's tires are much fresher than Earnhardt's. Now the second-place car, there it is, Whitcomb Racing Stable from New England, Derek Cope from Spanaway, Washington, the driver, and here you see the third-place car, number 11, Jeff Bodine, in that Junior Johnson prepared Ford. That car, for two straight years, has won a 125-mile qualifier. Well, we said that Earnhardt would have to make one more pit stop. Most of them, excepting maybe Bobby Hillen. I think he's the only one that might be able to go the distance from here. Here's the projection. His last pit stop was made on lap 134. He's averaging about 49 laps per tank of fuel, so he'll have to stop again at about lap 183. That's 17 laps short of the finish. Right now, he's got a 17-second edge on the second-place car, Derek Coe. Of course, Alan Kowicki pitting right now. That fellow really enjoying this race, isn't yeah. he? Listening on the radio. Just had his eyes closed and that's he could really focus on it. Yeah, right. Kowicki not having one of his better days. Not as good a day as he had here last year. Four-tire change. Involved in a spin earlier in the race, but came back out. Kept going. CBS would like to thank Junior Johnson and his great race team, the Hendrick Motorsports folks. Roush Racing and uh, Raymond Beadle, Blue Max, for the assistance today with the in-car cameras in this event. Here you see that difference once again as Trickle does not want to go a lap down to Earnhardt. He really hangs it right in there. Now, Earnhardt not taking any chances whatsoever. He's uh, running a good, comfortable speed. Maybe he's running as fast as he wants to. And so he's just following Trickle around. He's certainly conserving some fuel by following him around, but he has another pit stop. He can't conserve enough fuel that he can go the balance of the race. And it's a replay exactly of what we saw in Atlanta, Georgia, the last race. Yeah. It's just Earnhardt dominating, running the race just about as he wants to here. I was obese, 52 years old, physically unfit. I knew I had to do something. My wife once told me, uh, you need to do something. You look like you're going to explode. With Nutrisystem, I'm in better shape now than I was in the Marine Corps. It's time for you to lose weight, too. Order the all-new Nutrisystem Advance. This is me 44 pounds ago. I'm never going back to this. These are my old pants. They're a 44-inch waist. These are my new pants. They're 34. The new Nutrisystem Advance is our best program ever. A new heart-healthy program formulated to help fight your hunger and curb craving. Eat like a man and still lose weight. This is definitely man food. With Nutrisystem, I'm never hungry. In fact, it seems like I'm eating all day long. Call or go online now to order your first four weeks of awesome food. And through this special offer, you can get an extra two weeks of meals absolutely free. This is me 60 pounds ago, and I'm never going back. Plus, Nutrisystem Advanced is affordable. For about 11 bucks a day, you can start getting real results and get back in the game. No more counting, measuring, or meetings. Just great-tasting meals delivered right to your door. Even the shipping is free. Any man can lose weight with this diet. It's easy, it's convenient, it's affordable, and it definitely works. I feel great, I look great. Thank you, Nutrisystem. 
Order our four-week men's program now, and you can get an extra 14 breakfasts, 14 lunches, 14 snacks, 14 dinners, and 14 desserts. A full two weeks of food free. The last time I wore size 32 pants was my junior year of high school. I was 17 years old. I'm 44 years old, and I can keep up with 20-year-olds now. I love the way my wife looks at me now. Now I can take my shirt off and feel proud of the way I look. See how Nutrisystem Advanced can change your body, and you can get a full two weeks of food absolutely free. Call now to find out how. 420 of 500 miles complete. The man in black is being a Darth Vader here today in this Daytona 500. Dale Earnhardt commanding. Cope staying second. Great performance by him. Jeff Bodine, the 86 winner, is third. Ricky Rudd right there in fourth. Bill Elliott is in fifth. And looking further back, defending Winston Cup champion, Rusty Wallace stays in the lead lap in six. Michael Waltrip is having a very good day. And Morgan Shepard's been overlooked in his ride to that Bud Moore team doing a terrific job. There have been 19 different 500 winners in the 31 previous races, and these people are looking on to see if there will be a 20th today and a guy named Earnhardt. You know, the battle for a victory by a manufacturer, Ford holds the lead with seven victories, and Chevy is second with six. It could tie it if Earnhardt wins today, making it seven all between Ford and Chevrolet. And for Earnhardt, this is his 12th time in the 500. Let's take a look at how this field is assembled as we get down toward the finish. Earnhardt lapping Larry Pearson coming out of turn four is most definitely in command of this race. On the back stretch, there you find the second place car. That is number 10, Derek Cope in second position with his Chevrolet. Running all alone. The third position is car number 11. That's Jeff Bodine in the Junior Johnson Ford. There's Darrell Waltrip with him. Of course, Darrell Waltrip is two laps down. Dave Marcus in car number 71. They're putting a lap on uh, Sterling Marlin, not in car number 94. There you see the uh, next car back, fourth position, yellow and white car, Ricky Rudd. He is maintaining fourth position on the field. And following him is car number nine. Bill Elliott is being shown in fifth place today. And Bill Elliott, his mother Mildred, in the hospital up in Atlanta. We want to say hello to her and, and Bill's dad, George, who are watching the race this afternoon and certainly sitting there cheering Bill on. Having a good run here, folks, and certainly we want to wish uh, Mildred a speedy recovery. She's been in the hospital since last November, and uh, our prayers and best wishes go out to her and hope that she will continue to improve. And, Ken, she has shown improvement in recent weeks. I, you and I both talked to George Definitely. Elliott this yeah. morning, and uh, it was good to hear that uh, Mrs. Elliott is steadily improving. And George said he thought that Earnhardt was going to be tough. <laughs> Let's go to Mike Joy. Well, one spot behind Bill Elliott is Rusty Wallace wearing new colors this year. We've not been in the pits of the Winston Cup champ today, but he's in sixth place, and that's one better than he's ever finished in the 500. In fact, his average finish here is 21st. Harold Elliott, for a team that came down here without a lot of horsepower, you folks are hanging on pretty well. Well, you know, we had some problems, Mike, with the car and the engine. We, it was off a little bit on both the ends, and it just took us a while to get it sorted out. You know, it's a new car, and uh, we had a lot more work to do than we, than we realized. We came down the track and changed after the 24-hour race, and our car had loosened up, and, well, we got it fixed, and we're hanging on, but uh, I tell you, if, if anybody's going to beat Earnhardt today, they've got to shoot his tires out. <laughs> <laughs> that may well be. Let's go to Dave Despain. We're down here with the guys who are looking out for snipers with a 27-second lead. That's about all that can stop them. The team of Dale Earnhardt, do they look confident? Do they look secure? Well, they do indeed. The only possible glitch is that last pit stop. They tell us it will come about lap 180, give or take a lap or two. And right alongside the youngster, Derek Cope's crew gets ready to try to challenge this juggernaut. Juggernaut it is, this car number three. As we get down to the last 25 laps, 25 to go. Please drink responsibly. 
tonight on ESPN Classic. At 9, they broke barriers and made sports history. Now, America's first black quarterbacks finally tell their stories. There were times when you felt like you wanted to quit, but you also know guys before you knew if they played well that they were going to help the next generation. NFL greats from yesterday and today speak out and reveal their heroic struggles to leave the sidelines, take the lead, and play the game they love. In celebration of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, third in a mile, the history of the black quarterback. It's all tonight on ESPN Classic. The NBA season is in full swing and the action is heating up. NBA League Pass lets you see the hottest teams no matter where you live or where they play. The Lakers are riding high in the West and Orlando is working some magic of its own in the East. Puts it on lock by Howard. As a part of your subscription, see all the action online with NBA League Pass broadband. Don't miss the NBA League Pass free preview from DirecTV January 21st to the 27th on channels 751 to 763. Don't miss a minute of live NBA action. Get NBA League Pass now. I can't believe it. Nine laps to go and my guy's heading for the pit. And I'm shouting at the TV, have you lost your car driving mind? But now I'm always calm because I know why he's doing what he's doing. With NASCAR Hot Pass, I just pick my driver in his audio feed. We can pit right now with the leader. And I'm in from start to finish. What? I'm fine. I'm fine. Really, as long as it doesn't cost him the race. NASCAR Hot Pass puts you behind the wheel. Now in high definition, only on DirecTV. Some 21 laps remaining, and within two, they expect Earnhardt to throw the game to the other side of the table to his pit crew make that stop we're on lap 179 now here he is ready to lap car number 27 rusty wallace the sixth place man but no he's pitting there's the sixth place man rusty wallace and here's your leader in the key critical pit stop of the race dave despain Chocolate Myers, the gas man for this outstanding team, and they say it'll be gas only. They go with the jack to the right side in case, but it appears they will not need the tires. He smoked him coming in, but they're confident the gas is in, and he is gone in 8.2 seconds. He should be able to get back out without losing the lead. A lot of smoke as he came out. Well, as he came in on the left front and on the rear tires as he went out. I'm surprised. Yeah, of course, he locked the left front up when he came into the pits. Uh, now, they needed to get that full can of fuel in there uh, for him to be able to go the rest of the way. That is assuming that he was a very close to out of gas. Let's go to the pits and buy joy. Yeah, uh, Ned, as Earnhardt came by here, that did not look like smoke coming from the tire on his car. We'll check it further now that he's back up to speed. Ricky Rudd is getting right side tires from Jeff Chandler and Joey Knuckles. Danny Mansford brought him around. A fast stop for Ricky Rudd. Here's Dave Despain. Let's find out about the gas situation. Danny Chocolate Myers fuels the car. Danny, did you get her all in there? Yeah, we're full. We're okay. You're okay all the way to the finish. How much are you going to win this thing by? 20 seconds. Is there any other problem with that car? No, nah, if it goes like it's been going all day, we shouldn't have any problems. He lit up the tires coming in, but they think it will not be a problem. The car is filled with gas, or at least got the entire can they needed, and should be able to go the distance. Well, Dave, he just retook the lead after making a pit stop. Derek Cope had taken the lead as Earnhardt got back up to speed. Earnhardt has just passed Derek Cope and has taken over the lead once again. Here's his wife, Teresa, looking on and anticipating a big victory, his first ever Daytona 500 victory here. Boy, that car is awesome to look at it pull away. And Cope still has a pit stop to make. Unbelievable, this Earnhardt performance. They've and here comes before. Cope. Here is Cope coming in. This will move Bodine up into second and Bill Elliott into third. The way, the way Earnhardt is running, uh, he could very easily lap the entire field. Dave Despain has something to say. Dave? Derek Cope is on to pit road. He has started only two previous 500s. He's the second place car here today. They'll go to the left side tires first. Buddy Perrin changes the front tire. Kevin Jurgen changes the rear. And this is their last shot to give Cope, this amazing youngster who didn't run last year's race, some attempt at, Darryl, at uh, Dale Earnhardt, the leader. We show at 1377. Not a bad stop for two tires and fuel. Let's move in and talk to the crew chief here. This guy, Buddy Perrin, won a big race at Daytona. It happened 1984, Firecracker 400. Does that sound familiar? Richard Petty was his driver then. You got anything for Dale Earnhardt today? Well, you know, Dale's been awful strong. I just wish we could maybe got a caution. They put on 
all four tires earlier, and uh, Dale's been real strong ever since he's been here. My hat's off to Keith Dorton. I'm telling you, automotive special engine today, and this pure later Pontiac, and uh, we had put Rainax on that windshield right before we started, and this thing's really been slick all day. Come what may, tell me about Derek Cope. You've won with Richard Petty here, but this youngster looks very impressive. I'm gonna tell you what, he's got a big, strong heart, and we're gonna go a lot of places this year with him, and uh, you know, he's run real good. Uh, Bob Wickham's really providing everything for us to do it with. And, uh, we're just real happy about everything. A veteran crew chief and a young driver writing quite a story at this Daytona 500. In 1984, Cale Yarborough won this race back-to-back -back second straight year. The man in second was Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt intends to fix things this year and win this race. Rusty Wallace overshot his pit just a moment ago. He had moved to second place. But now we'll see what the scores tell us about where he is. Yeah, he overshot his pits by two pits, about uh, 35 feet. Yeah. It's so hot out there, well over 85 degrees. Here's the shot from the Goodyear Blimp Enterprise of this record crowd gathered here at the Daytona International Speedway. It has been record crowds all week. Dating back to last Sunday, even last Saturday for qualifying. Amazing the enthusiasm that is growing for Winston Cup racing. And CBS is delighted to bring you the 500. And we'll be with you in Michigan this summer. And for the Die Hard 500 at Talladega, Alabama at the end of July. Now these people we're seeing here, Ken, are the spotters for the drivers. It's a second set of eyes for the drivers. If there's trouble up in front of them, they notify them. They normally look about a quarter of a lap ahead of their driver and they have communication by two-way radio and they'll tell the driver what's going on and in many cases they're clocking the cars and letting the driver know how fast he's running and also if he needs to change his line on the racetrack now dale earnhardt doesn't need to change his line because boy he's had to ride all day it seems That's like true. i think they're saying fold the tent and pack the tools earnhardt's got everybody covered for just a moment and it's earnhardt in first labonte in second elliott third jeff bodine in fourth there's Terry Labonte, currently being shown in the second position. What a tremendous run for the Jackson brothers. And the Elliott Stable now is being shown in third spot. Every Saturday, ESPN Classic goes live with college basketball's hottest matchups. This week, it's a live. 193 laps are complete. We are under caution for the third time today. The reason was from the car that you just saw, car number 11, in trouble up in turn number two. Here's Mike Joy quickly. Ken, they'll change the right side tires at least. No, they're going all the way around. They may have flat spot of the tires after he spun, but he'll get back up for the run to the finish. Here's Dave Despain. And Dale Earnhardt likewise will go with a four tire stop. They've already loosened the left sides as the crew come around to make that left side change. They now have the field on their heels and they want everything that they can throw at them for what will be a two or three lap shootout at the end. After dominating all day, these guys have their back to the wall. Let's go back to Mike Joy. The five car of Ricky Rudd slid in sideways. It was the only way he could get near his pit stop. They finished the left tire tire change and had to wait until everybody else moved before he could get away. That put him back in the running order, and Mike Spoil would have been a good run for Rudd. Eight cars in the lead lap. They will be bunched and ready to fight it out to decide the 500. Now let's look at what happened to bring out the caution flag. Okay, we're riding with Jeff Bodine. with the race cam, and then you can see it start to spin around. He was looking at the infield when he should have been looking straight ahead. Of course, that's when he was spinning around. And you can see him fight the wheel. It was a 360, and then he kept going. So Jeff Bodine not hitting anything, right just went Richard, around. Right where Richard Petty had spun earlier today, there may have been some oil laid down by car number 75, Rick Wilson, who had been running slowly for several laps. He had been down to the bottom of the track, but there was a time when he was up in the groove anyway. You, yellow came out, eight cars are together to decide the 500, and they're sorting themselves out, coming out of four right now, and there's one lap before there will be races. Six laps now. There's the number 75 car. If you notice, just before Bodine's car spun, you can see a car in the upper right-hand corner of the screen letting out a lot of smoke. It may be slippery over in that part of the track. So here comes the field behind the pace car. 32nd annual Daytona 500. 
They always talk about over here how they used to organize great finishes by throwing a caution flag. I don't think that was no, the case no, here, Ned. No, no, it was a justified caution flag because when Bodine spun, you didn't know who, who how many cars were going to get into it, so they needed to warn the other cars, get them slowed down that were coming into that turn. Fortunately, he didn't hit anything or didn't hit another car, didn't hit the wall. But look at this traffic jam that we got here right now. Dale Earnhardt is back in there pretty far, but with the NASCAR rules, he is able to move up on the outside. Derek Cope, let's see, is leading this race. Here are some of the folks that have missed this 500. Neil Bonnet, 15 tries. Ricky Rudd, Terry Labonte. Schrader, Davey Allison, and you could name a whole lot more, including a guy named Ned Jarrett who yeah. won 50 races. Sure could. I, uh, I tried for a number of years myself. Came pretty close in 1963, ran out of gas with two laps to go. Teresa Earnhardt looking on, a little anxious here now as it's a whole new game to decide this one. Yeah, she didn't want that caution flag. Neither did Dale Earnhardt, Richard Childress, or any of his crew. If they get the, the green flag next time around, it'll be a five-lap dash to the checkered flag. Derek Cope is leading, and Bobby Hill in his second, and Dale Earnhardt is third. Terry Labonte is fourth, Bill Elliott fifth, and Ricky Rudd sixth, and Rusty Wallace seventh. When you put up a fat head, you're making a statement too big for words. A statement like this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need something more. How about the NFL, NBA, MLB, NASCAR? If you can think of a sports-related acronym, we probably got a fat head for you. The biggest names and moments captured at the height of intensity, plucked from the playing field like ripened fruit that can smack you in your ear hole. Nice work, fellas. Hall of Famers, ex-gamers, QB sackers, revitalized Packers, I'm starting to rhyme and I like it. Fat head. A passion that's been building and building, so put it in your building. Get your favorite fatheads from the NFL, plus MLB, NBA, NASCAR, and more. Go to fathead.com now. Brown cow. Bingo. What is that? Let's just remind me that we got games on Sunday now. And you don't think 10 minutes from now when we park in front of a big giant arena? Everybody gets out. That's not going to jog your memory. ABC, your NBA Sunday destination. This Sunday, get Celtics Magic and Cavaliers Lakers. One sport, one full day of classic sports action. Saturday, it's an ESPN Classic Weekend Marathon that puts you in the driver's seat. Place your bids. The hottest wheels are up for grabs in the Russo and Steel Car Auction Marathon. Saturday, 8 a.m. on ESPN Classic. The ESPN College Basketball Game of the Week, 9 a.m. Sundays on ESPN Classic. Jennifer Finney there, Derek yeah. Cope's girlfriend, looking a little anxious as he leads the field down. Cope in the Whitcomb Racing Stable car up in front as they get ready to sort out the 32nd 500. There's Bobby Hillens, number eight, right there in second spot. Dave Despain. Bad news on the radio to Richard Childress. What did your driver, Dale Earnhardt, just tell you? I said the eight car rammed him in the left rear out there. How bad is it? Any idea? I don't know. He said he hit him real hard. I don't know. You've got to come through a lot of traffic here. Are you still going to win this race? Who knows? You know, we got five laps to go. I'll guarantee you Dale will be trying. These guys are not happy. They've complained to the NASCAR officials. The contention is that Bobby Hillen hit Dale Earnhardt in the left rear under yellow. And when they go back green, he'll have a damaged race car. Let's go to Mike Joy. No comment from the Hillen Pitts. Harry Hyde is on the radio trying to anticipate the flag and tell his driver to go and win his second Super Speedway 500-mile race. Five laps to go. Hillen won at Talladega, Alabama. His only Winston Cup win. Car number eight lies second. The black number three, Earnhardt, third with five to go. Four and three quarters. Jeff Bodine right on his bumper. Bodine brought this caution flag out, but he's still running in the fourth position. Now Earnhardt trying to make a move on the inside of Hill and taking over second. And brings Bodine with him. Derek Cope on the outside, down on the inside. A little crack in the windshield perhaps on the right side of car number three. Earnhardt goes into first. 
Yeah, he didn't waste any time. Uh, evidently, that bump didn't hurt him. We didn't see anything there as we watched Teresa Earnhardt watch Dale Earnhardt come around. And Earnhardt still shows the dominance that he's shown here all day long. That, that traffic behind Earnhardt is fulminated mercury. Anything could happen there. They're so close, so fast. A snarl of cars just behind the leader. Down to four, Earnhardt has separated himself as quickly as possible from the remainder of the field. Bodine, number 11, on the inside. On the outside, it is Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott is up to fourth. They're showing Bodine as a lap down, Ned. Oh, really? Bodine, well, a I lap down. Okay, I didn't realize he lost a lap during that uh, spin. Pulling back up on Earnhardt. Comes Derek Cope in that red Chevrolet number 10. And the car number one of Terry Labonte right in there running in the third position. Derek Cope has never finished better than sixth place in any of his racing starts. This will be his first top five finish. And look at him putting the pressure on Earnhardt. Huh. It looks like that run that Rutman made a few years ago in Lake Speed. Dave Despain. Are remarkable about the Colt performance is the fact that he's doing it on used tires. His crew chief, Buddy Perrin, elected to keep him out on that caution period to take the lead in the race. Earnhardt came in and got four tires, and nonetheless, Cope's been able to come up and race with him. And here comes Terry Labonte. If the slingshot was ever called for, it would be this race today, but the carburetor plates have pretty much erased that possibility. Here you see the number five car of Ricky Rudd. He's in the sixth position. Front four, Elliott is hanging on to the tail of that draft. Bill Elliott, twice a winner, 85 and 87 right there. Jeff Bodine being recorded as a lap down, giving us these incredible pictures. As they get ready to sort this one out. Number three, Earnhardt in front, and Derek Cope driving the race of his career, stays in second place. The Spanaway Washington campaigner moves in again on number three, Earnhardt. And look at it moving up here, that Pure Leader sponsored car. Pure Leader is being sold now by its parent company because it doesn't fit in the scheme of things. And here it is running second in the Daytona 500, maybe winning it. The white flag coming down to Dale Earnhardt. One lap to go. Does anybody have anything left to cope? with the man in black. Here's what's going to happen, maybe. I thought Terry Labonte was going to try to move down and take over second place, and if he does, that'll just open it up for Earnhardt to move away. We'll see. Naturally, every one of them wants to gain a position, whether it's uh, for from fourth to third or whatever, but if, if they do get side by side, it'll help Earnhardt. This is the half a lap to go. Four-car shootout to decide it all. Dale Earnhardt. Here comes Duke Cope down on the inside. Whoa. Earnhardt has Earnhardt. problems. Slopping back, something is amiss. Here comes the field driving for the finish. And on the outside, it is car number 10, Derek Cope. Something amiss on the Earnhardt car. Coming to the line, it's Labonte pulling up and an amazing finish. The Whitcomb Racing Team has won it. Unbelievable. And it looked like Earnhardt had a tire go down maybe as he went into the turn. And Nicole crying a little bit. Brett Cope's first top five finish, his first victory, comes in the Daytona 500. A remarkable day of sport. Unbelievable. Bob Whipcomb, who brought a team out three years ago, had nothing but misfortune and bad luck. And Rick Hendrick, who gave a car to one driver today to be in this race, literally gave it to him just, just to Strickland. get him out of here. Hunt Strickland, after uh, he was involved in that altercation, now he's put some motors together for this team, and they've won the biggest race of all. It's a great win for the Northwest. When you think of the years that they've had drivers come down here from the Northwest to race, this is the first time they have ever tasted a victory in the Daytona 500. Look again at what happened. Well, Earnhardt looked like he had things in command. All of a sudden, his Chevrolet just slows, and he goes up into the second groove. Something happened to that car. I guess the engine. I thought he had a tire go down, but I believe it was something else. He lost power. Cope took advantage of it. Here's Earnhardt coasting around. Cope comes on to win. Terry Labonte will come home with a second-place finish. Bill Elliott in third. Let's go to Dave Despain. Derek Cope still has a problem. He's on the radio to the crew chief, Buddy Farrell. What did he say? He don't know where Victor Lane is. <laughs> Can you figure out how to navigate him in there? Yeah. What? It's uh, 
It's really a wonderful deal. I tell you, we pitted. I came up here and pit behind, uh, beside Richard Childers today because I'm gonna tell you what, they're a great crew and they got a Chevrolet. And yesterday out in practice, I knew, I knew who we had to run with. I knew who we had to beat. We had the best car in practice and, uh, and we had to beat Dale Earnhardt and we did today. And my hat's off to Richard and his crew and Kurt Summerdean and all of them. You raced him very hard right at the end, even though you didn't have the fresh tires. Did you have a shot at him if he hadn't had trouble? Well, you walked up to me and asked me, did I have anything up my sleeve? And, uh, you know, I just wanted to say that my hat's off to Goodyear also. We ran, uh, ran Goodyear tires today almost uh, 250 laps on the left side. So the engineer came up to me and said, buddy, you need to change them lefts. I said, I'm not going to change any tires. <laughs> A veteran crew chief guides his young driver to victory lane at Daytona. What a story. Nobody, perhaps nobody, gave this man a shot to be here in victory lane. Derek Cole, hop on down here, has won the Daytona 500. Can you believe it? Absolutely not. I'll tell you what, you know, in my wildest dreams, you know, you, you, you always come down here with optimism, but you know, this is this is the one that eludes everybody and Darrell Walter did it last year, you know, for the first time in his career and it is a pleasure to have the Pure Letter Chevrolet aluminum up front and take the win like this. It's it's a dream come true. You played professional baseball. You came down here to race with virtually no money last year and now you've won the biggest prize in all of this sport. Tell me about the pass for the lead. Well, you know, Earnhardt was dominant all day long. We, I, there was no way I was going to get him. I was just trying to hold off Terry Levani, but he blew a tire going in the last turn. He did a heck of a job holding that car in line. I went to the bottom side and, and had the win, but uh, I'll tell you, Dale was a dominant car, but that pure Air Chevrolet Lumina is, is number one in, in victory lane. Eric, congratulations. Let's go to David Hobbs. Bobby Hillen, Dale Earnhardt said on his radio that you bumped him during the caution. Did you do that? I didn't think so. You know, he passed me. Uh, before. He's still under the caution. And NASCAR told me to go back around him. And I'm not sure if he knew what to do. So he was keeping me back there. And it was just real confusing. I finally got by him. But he, you know, he went right back by me without any trouble. I was just trying to get the best position we could. And a car ran good. We didn't get any tires the last pit stop. That hurt us. And we, we got banged around a little bit. But uh, it was a pretty good finish for the Snickers car. Well, you nearly won the 500, but not this year. Ken, you got more for us up in the top. What a story here. Derek Cope, as we look at these standings, wanted to be a baseball player, grew up in San Diego, California, played at Whitman College, suffered a knee injury, and it ended his baseball career. And at 21 years of age, he had never been near a race car. His brother had one, he tried it, he was hooked, and he's been with it ever since. Let's go to David Hobbs. Dale, what the heck happened on the last lap? We ran over some debris and cut a right rear tire down, David. Uh, just a... Uh, quarter of a lap away from Victor. How much you could do about it. I was sitting with your wife and it was absolute devastation in your motorhome. We're all real sorry for you. Better luck next time. That was the scene in those final moments before it all came apart in the 12th 500 for Dale Earnhardt. This is the scene in Victory Lane right now for Derek Cope and Bob Whitcomb and company. For Ned Jarrett, Chris Economaki, Mike Joy, Dave Despain, and David Hobbs. I'm Ken Squire saying so long from Daytona Beach. The Carrier Dome on the campus of Syracuse University in Syracuse, New York. And inside, you may be looking at history. It could be the largest on-campus crowd ever in college basketball. And they are revving up for Georgetown in Syracuse.